Hi everyone, it is February 11, 2019. I'm going to be going through a lot of material regarding how everyone is being tracked, information important for targeted individuals. I'm starting here because I just got this email from a subscriber who is in Sacramento. She wrote telling me that her phone yesterday just suddenly it was displaying 5G instead of 4G and uh, she thinks that Sacramento being one of the uh, 5G cities where they were going to be rolling out 5G, she thinks it's now on. She's had horrible headaches for a couple of days. She sent me a picture. Now, when you guys send me videos or pictures from your phones, for some reason, they're coming in at the wrong angles. But as you can see right here, these are the 5G boxes, 5G antennas. There's nothing we can do, guys. This is going full steam ahead. In fact, Trump, well, he was uh, instrumental in getting 5G rolled out really, really fast and making it possible for the telecommunications industry to put those 5G cells wherever they want to hell with your private property or to hell with your sovereign, sovereign powers and rights, local governments, state governments. And, um, oh, where is Mar-a-Lago? Palm Beach, Palm Springs, I know, Florida. No 5G there. Mar-a-Lago, Trump's estate in Florida. Okay. So, I also just want to show you some pictures that have been sent to me by subscribers who I believe all of the pictures that you're going to see is California. This is Northern California. Fabulous microwaved sky, isn't it? Really? Now this is supposed to be a natural sky. Don't think so. I want to show you just a few more. Ah, the harp ring sky. Great capture. Frequencies at work. High frequency heating causing that harp ring in the sky. Very dangerous frequencies. But nothing there looks natural, nor here. And I'm going to be doing a video on what the sky has been like here, what the weather has been like here. And I think that there, there might come a time when we just never see the sun anymore, that we're just given these drab gray, uh, cloud-like substance up there that has been artificially manufactured from horizon to horizon. And then it causes the rain or not rain. Today it was, everything was wet, but there was no rain. It rained later on, but I walked out. There was no, it was just, wow, tremendous amount of moisture all over, but no real rain until later. Look at all the microwaves here. Okay. Um, I'm going to be playing some videos, reading from some articles, and I want to bring your attention to a video that I posted back in August of 2018. Stephen Schillen's Shellen's The Spark. 
his life as a targeted individual. And Steve, I am so sorry. And I have to say, watching some of your videos on your channel, I agree. I agree with the comments that you left underneath. I relate to the what I perceive as a you know it's like throwing your hands up just saying you know what the hell man life has it really become this um, kind of meaningless in terms of the response from our fellow Americans. Yeah, and a whole lot of fellow quote-unquote truthers who really don't seem to care much about anything. There, I said it. It's almost like this forum here has been... It's like a... It's a form of entertainment for a lot of people. You know, if you're just getting the knowledge of what other people are posting and not doing anything with it, what's the point? Why are you doing it? I mean, if you're not doing anything, then why continue getting this information? I don't get it. I will tell you that I am really having a very hard time I don't know what the hell is going on with me, um, but I can actually bring it all the way back to Harvey, that deliberate flooding in Texas, Houston, Houston surrounding area. I have had periodic drops in energy, motivation, uh, confidence, everything, and brain power since that time and each time I think I'm going to get myself back and I don't and then I'm dropped a little bit lower and then I fight like hell to get me back and I'm not coming back I'm not coming back now I relate to a lot of what targeted individuals go through because I am a scapegoat the scapegoat of a severely malignant, narcissistic mother, sister, brother. And I could just say, you know, just use interchangeably the words scapegoat and targeted. What they did to me put me into this um, nightmare nightmare and a lot of what I saw in Steve Schellen's movie that I do hope that everybody clicks on the link below I'll show you where to access this movie but all I had to read was this in this review brilliant review beautifully written Thomas McFarlane that he uh, wrote on the spark what if your worst fears become your world and no one believes a word you say that's how I have lived since 2002. So when you listen to targeted individuals, you listen and they they say they've been going through something for 23 years. They've been going through the targeting for 23 years. How do you believe that unless you've had some experience that is similar. I believe it. You don't have to convince me. 
I absolutely 100% believe it because I know these targeting programs are happening. I know what malignant narcissists can do to one's life. They can destroy it and you have no one in your life that believes you and you are isolated. Now then take on the targeting. Okay. What if that scapegoat is also targeted and the people that she has had in her life suddenly start behaving towards her just like those malignant narcissists in her family? How could it be? The close people that she has had in her life suddenly start behaving just like the family members. Well, that adds more madness to your life. You don't understand what the hell is going on. You, you, your, your life then just becomes these pieces that you're continually trying to put together because one really, it needs some understanding of their life, but you're just alone holding pieces of your life. The life you knew is gone. It's gone. And then you start living outside that life and it creates a whole lot of stress, frustration, um, angst, pain. You, you're desperate to get back to your old life. You're, and you can't, you can't. And you think that you found, you know, friends that you can trust and, and then you find out differently at some point down the road. Um, it's hell. It, you, you are just beginning to live hell, hell. But the more I learn about these targeting programs and there are different programs, but that they can, and I'm going to get into it, that they can actually, they can buy satellite with these frequencies, literally target someone to create in them this new uh, emotional feeling, attitudes, opinions towards someone, they can get them to then start behaving in ways that look identical to how your family behaves towards you. They can get people to literally start behaving that way. So it does create, you know, an awful lot of <laughs> questions in one's mind, but because all of this technology is invisible and they're targeting individuals to behave towards those who are targeted, the changes are subtle. And the change going on through that individual that suddenly you, you had this close friend, you don't know them anymore. You just don't know them anymore. And they can't communicate anything. They're not, well, you get an awful lot of strange, kind of uh, deer in the headlight looks, bizarre things that they say. And yeah, your, your wish is for them to come back. Please, I need that friend that I had, that I had. Please, they don't come back. They get worse and worse. 
And yeah, just like the narcissist, they point the finger at you, telling you that you are, you're the wrong person here. You're the one with the problem. You're, you're this, you're that. Or they project their, uh, their behaviors onto you. You want them to get, to stop lying to you, please. Because everything in your life has just been destroyed. You have nothing but, but the integrity of being an honest person in the world. They know so much about you. They know your life has been destroyed by lies, your reputation, everything's been destroyed by not strangers, your own family, your mother, your father, your sister. And you are, you, you desperately need to find a way to, um, you know, repair the damage. You want to clear your name from these lies and you can't do it. But then your close friends start lying and lying and lying and it gets worse and worse. And then they call you a liar when you're just dead. Please, you've got to just deal with this, please. So understand why you're lying. I don't care that people lie. Look, we live in a lying culture. People lie. But please take responsibility for it and examine why you need to lie so that you don't lie again and so that you can repair the trust that you broke and will be better for it, you know, um, but that doesn't happen. Instead, instead you're called a liar and they know what that's going to do to you because they know that you have nothing left but, but walking honestly in the world and speaking honestly because that's what you believe the truth is so important but no they're going to chip away now at your integrity and claim that you're lying when you're not and it just gets worse and worse and worse you do have to wonder what the hell what the hell but because you also understand psychology, you also understand the psyche, you also understand, you know, when people don't do that shadow work that is necessary uh, for them to understand who they are, what their behavior is about, uh, to increase their own self-awareness and to bring them to a higher consciousness where their care is actually a generative care very, very important so that they get off that low road thinking that they care and they're compassionate, but it's never demonstrated. So they're just speaking those words. And when it gets demonstrated is when you do that personal work on your own self, you, they claim to want to do the work. Oh my God, it's so, you know, you're played. Am I played? What the hell is going on? Um, then you hear, I don't want to grow. And you keep going back to hearing that. And you're like, that, just the way it was said, the tone of voice, the flatness in the tone, I don't want to grow after like three years of telling you how much they wanted to raise their consciousness and all this kind of stuff, of course, they also just, well, speaking a good game, maybe trying to hold on to the relationship. Who the hell knows what their motivation is if they don't know, but one can only speculate then. But when you do that work, you do know you know what you're about, what you stand for, the behaviors that you have, the issues that you have. You understand what motivates you to behave in certain ways. Most people never go there. A lot of people, 
instead of actually facing themselves, will do the most absurd, say the most bizarre, even become vicious. So they don't have to ever look in the mirror. But how can this be coming from your close friends? They know exactly what they know exactly how you're going to be feeling, what's going to happen to you. They know that your circumstances are going to get worse, and they don't care. Then they begin to show that they really don't care. So is this someone who was, who was brought about to behave this way towards me, or is it someone that just cannot face themselves and everything is about defending the ego. I don't know, but either way, it really, well, the betrayal hurts. <laughs> and that's an understatement. But it puts your life into You know, just add on, added on is what the hell now is going on. And you're still dealing with all of the years of what the hell is going on now. What the hell is going on now. You're done. You've been destroyed. You're homeless. You're, you have no money, you are no friends, no family, and they break you to a point where you do not know how to trust anybody. You know, this is Steve Shellen. Look out, sweetie. That's, that's Carmi, Kim's mom's dog. She's old. But she's lovely. We've gotten to know each other pretty good. You know, she can't see, can't hear, but here you go, honey. That 26 seconds is enough to tell me that this man is real. There's no bullshit. There's no pretense. There's no, hey, I'm on YouTube and I'm going to uh, get a whole lot of views, you know, acting. This is a real human being who was destroyed, destroyed, targeted. So what if your worst fears become your world and no one believes a word you say? I, I've been living that. A whole lot of targeted individuals live that. You watch the spark and you'll see someone living it. That's the poster headline for this beautifully crafted abstract art film by Canadian actor, filmmaker, and painter Stephen Shellen, who was in an awful lot of movies and um, performances in feature films, A River Runs Through It, The Stepfather, American Gothic, Bodyguard, Damned River, TV series, Counter-Strike, La Femme, Nikita, um, Hollywood actor, targeted. Sometimes I have to wonder if some people are targeted because they're too real, too honest, and got to bring them down because that's not what this world is about. Now I read, I, I you can watch my video, but I do want to read just one, and I'll link below to the article. It really is a wonderful. 
article. The just in watching this though, some subscribers claim that I'm targeted. I don't know. I just don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't have the gang stalking. But I do know that there are other programs. Um, but watching him in this film, I could, I could almost feel what he was feeling. Even when he wasn't talking facial expression, body language. The whole, like, the chaos that is brought to your life. The, what the fuck? How the hell? <laughs> what, what, your life is getting destroyed? And people respond to you in ways that, you know, it's just not appropriate, but they feel it's, it's appropriate. And you're left devastated. You're left devastated. And when you're real, you can see the devastation and despair on someone else who is real. And yes, gripping, emotionally charged performances. Absolutely. <laughs> it got me. I remember when the film was over, I, I couldn't move. I just, I couldn't move for a long time. Just thinking about my life, his life, so many other people's lives, subscribers' lives of mine. I targeted individual. I was going to be going to uh, moving up to Tennessee, Charlotte. She had the burns. She opened up her computer. She saw a picture it flashed on her computer. When she opened up the laptop, picture flashed for a couple of seconds. She in the bathtub naked. And other experiences that she had that one can only, um, yep, you're targeted. She she became almost like a shell of herself, um, didn't go out, had to get off, you know, YouTube and Google Plus because she was targeted on the Internet. So the only thing that she would do is watch music videos, country music. And she had asked me several times come to Tennessee, move in. I couldn't. I was in a, an apartment in Anderson, South Carolina. I had a lease. And I started visiting her um, a couple of times. We started talking more regularly. Uh, she said you know, we would talk about my living there and all the things that we would do. And then finally I said, look, I'll go down to the manager of this apartment complex, see if I can get out of the lease and we were talking every day, laughing, talking about, you know, how much fun we were going to have. It was the first time she was excited, first time I was excited about anything in such a long time. She already started. She got someone into um, the woman that she had, you know, cleaning her house. They were already um, moving around rooms for me to come. And I'd say, Charlotte, don't do that because I don't know if I can. And she said, I, I, I know you can, I know you can. So I told her I'd call her Monday after I spoke to the apartment manager, I spoke to the apartment manager and sure enough, she had a friend who wanted the apartment. I, for the first time in years, I was, I had some pep 
in my step, <laughs> as they say, and I was, I couldn't, I, I was, I couldn't wait to get back to my apartment to call her, because I don't walk around with a phone, and I flip open my flip top, and I see that I got a call, and then I see that it's from Tennessee, because of the Eric area code. It's Charlotte's area code, but it's not her number. I figured she called me from her daughter's phone number. I call. It's her son-in-law. Charlotte had a heart attack and died hours before. First time we're excited. First time, you know, we're laughing and talking about all the things that we were going to be doing. Dead. And since then, I have not been the same. Yeah. Something very dark is happening here. It's destroying people's lives. And for those lives that get destroyed, add to that the darkness of being surrounded by people who don't care. That's the heartbreak of it. That's the devastation. So here in the film, Stephen Shellen's protagonist character is told by Rose, a character who's an expert on the deep state and surveillance crimes, that he is being targeted for surveillance crimes because the deep state elements who have chosen him are soulless beings. They're soulless beings. And they're fascinated by him because of his spark. The human spirit. The spark is obvious in people who are real. Real, not actors. S yeah, okay, he's an actor, but by profession, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, we've got a lot of actors in the world. They, they put on their mask and their costumes, and then they go out in the world, and they're not real. You know, they just carry their act all around, you know, which is generally motivated by their own personal issues that they're not even aware of, their, their desperate need for approval, to not get abandoned by anybody, um, to be looked upon as a good human being. The kudos the kudos that they need. So they, they, they don't live real. And I have to tell you, living, searching for real, searching for honest people where I could have friends that I can trust, how is it 60 years later, I haven't found any in real life? How is that possible? What are we living here? Is this hell? Because it sure is feeling like it. So down at the bottom of this cost $3.99 by clicking the link in the upper right corner of the trailer, you can watch the spark. What happened to Steve Shellen's life? And it's real, and he's still suffering the consequences 23 years later. Like I suffered the consequences <laughs> what, 17 years later?
this isn't the way life is supposed to go. Let me just show you. I'm going to do another video on all of the videos that I had open for more information, but I just want to show you this site, bigger than snowed and dot com. Electromagnetic weapons are being used to torture and subjugate countless American citizens. What is this site about to raise awareness of modern techniques used to illegally repress and subjugate innocent civilians in the USA and worldwide? Our focus is primarily on the tactics related to gang stalking, ACA, organized stalking, and more worrisome, the torture and subjugation with electromagnetic weapons that often goes alongside it. And I will tell you that I am hypersensitive. So these, the saturation of these frequencies, I am, I'm just no longer myself. In another, on another site, which I'm going to get to tomorrow, it talks about the brain damage of the tracking via satellite, brain damage via microwave weapons. The tinnitus, the buzzing, the hissing, the clicking, however, however you experience it. It's causing brain damage. And my brain has, it's just been, I don't know. I am just not myself. And it's worrisome. Of course it is. Think about all the targeted individuals now who are alone. And I have subscribers who are right there. They having to deal with everything that's going on in their life, deal with it alone. The isolation that was really brought about by my own choices, not being able to, not being able to, 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 to deal with people who lie and think nothing of it. I could no longer do it. See, that's the real unfortunate part about doing that personal work, raising your consciousness, understanding yourself. Um, you're alone because so few do it. You're alone. And your principles, that they take over. They just take over your life. You're secondary to them. So for me, truth is my principle, my spiritual um, higher power, truth. And my practice of spirituality is living honestly in the world. I keep it simple. That's it. So what happens when you are taken over by something far more important than yourself and truth becomes something that is so important that you you understand a lot of people lie it's not about forgiveness it's about come on just accept responsibility and then look into why you need to lie and then you don't have to lie again grow If they don't do that, oh, you hang on and hang on. And you're desperate and you hang on and you so want those who are really close to you, those you love. You so please, please. And then you start behaving in ways that, you know, they start looking at you as if you're pathetic because you're just begging them, please. And they don't. And they won't. You can't stay any longer. You can't. You can't, first of all, be controlled by people who demand that you, this is it. This is all you're going to get. 
I'm going to lie to you and you have to accept it. That's the way our relationship's going to go. That ain't that that I've never been that type of person, but when you recognize how the lying has crippled your own life, you get the ripple effect of all of these lies and you get that they're causing an awful lot of harm by lying. You can't stay. You can't stay. So what happens to the targeted individual or to the scapegoat that has been thoroughly destroyed, so isolated, they come upon this person that they can relate to, they become a really close friend, and that's what you're left with. Leaving means now your isolation has become torturous. They know it, but they don't care. This is doing 23 years, Steve. <laughs> it feels like this endless marathon of pure evil that you have to continually struggle through. It's like it never ends. It's just. And I wish I could say something outside of saying, boy, man, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get the whole truth or community. I get how people don't care. I get it. I get it. And it hurts. So, um, this is a site where you can reach out to a whole lot of the whistleblowers, a whole lot of people who have either been a part of these programs or been in the military, the NSA, William Binney. You can read all about these people, but these are respected, some renowned, some targeted because they were the whistleblowers trying to, you know, go through the uh, their protocol to inform of corruption and and then they become targeted. This is going on. You're not going to have John DeCamp, the Army Intelligence Officer, William Binney, uh, who worked at the uh, NSA for 30 years, um, who was really the Snowden um, before Snowden because he was the whistleblower and he came out and said Americans are already their data is being collected this was soon after 2001 I think then you got William Taylor Marine Corps veteran Mary Gregory a US Customs Officer Dr. Colin Ross psychiatrist Jesse Beltran uh, president of the International Center Against Abuse of Covert Technology, Cheryl Welsh, whose articles I have posted on, investigative journalist, lawyer, a whole lot of very, you know, successful, respected people. Carl Clark, CIA and MI5 operative. He finally just became so disgusted with what was happening with the targeting of individuals that he then had to talk about it. A whole lot. Karen Stewart, 28 years NSA. Dr. John Hall, David Voigt, Naval Academy graduate, former officer, human rights advocate, 
Renee Pittman, uh, Doug Roke, or is it Rock? I'm not sure, but a retired U.S. Army officer, Ph.D. in physics. All these people who have been trying to educate and inform not only Americans, but everybody, that this is going on. They haven't been able to get anywhere. Paul Bacho, whistleblower, former DARPA science scientist. Barry Trower, physicist, Royal Navy veteran. So you're a small channel. You post because you know people, please wake up. You've got to do the research. You've got to uh, get yourself educated. Get yourself up to speed on what is happening in our country because we are being taken over. We have become, you know, East Germany, uh, the Stasi, the CIA, using their Zersetzung um, techniques, just like East, the East German Stasi used. We're now using this against people to shut them up. Dissidents, you know, you, you create circumstances that leave them with no resources, no support, completely isolated and broken. Um, they're doing it. They're doing it. And you know what? Steve and others who are targeted, perhaps we should just, you know, have channels that we're just talking to one another to give us, you know, the support that we need and forget about the rest. I don't know what to do. I've been doing this virtually every single day for seven years. It became my life. Compelled to do it. Can't stop doing it because the truth is everything and you know it, but you're surrounded by people who don't give a flying frig about truth or honesty, trust in relationships, nothing. So, yeah, man. I don't know. Maybe we are a living hell. Maybe this really is hell. Because it sure doesn't feel like heaven. <laughs> and it hardly feels like life. You know, the energy force has just been sucked out, replaced with this dark energy that you know, we're just sludging through. Yeah, this became a just talking video. 5G is just going to make everything worse. So, yeah, we have Trump who's, Oh, 5G, let's get it out. Now he's signed an executive order, artificial intelligence, promoting that. And then you have the Trump supporters who are very ready to tell me, you know, to well, I don't want to curse too much, but I'm tired. I'm really tired. And if you understood the circumstances that I live, you wouldn't say just take a break and, you know, go relax for a couple of days. You don't get my circumstances. That's that's been taken out of my life. I have no resources. I have nothing. It's been removed from my life. So, I am living um 24/7. this hell. So yeah, is it important for me to get that, those comments from subscribers that are supporter, supportive and uplifting? Of course. So many though, man. Woof. You know, the, and a lot of it is based on, oh my God, I said something that challenged their belief and 
and that's it. They don't know how to listen. You know, this whole uh, social media thing has been really instrumental in getting me to see how unbelievably messed up our Americans, their thinking, their behavior. You know, once again, I get another comment from, oh my God, it was a warning in capitals and that I had uh, the bashing of Christians. I'm so sick of it. And that you better get right with God. And, you know, <laughs> it's not bashing of Christians. It's bashing of his hypocrisy, which is all over the place. Got another wonderful stench we're saturated in hypocrisy of the American people. Very few, very few are just real, genuine human beings. So do I relate to you, Steve, when you say... So you can see it for yourself. I am so sick of this. And I didn't know until, what, 2003, that there were other people that had gone through the same kind of targeting I was going through, the same kind of gang-stalking harassment. And it's funded by government agencies, and they do it all around the world at different, in different countries. U.S., Canada, Australia, primarily, I think. England. But it goes on all over. They mind fuck you. And if you, and go, if you go for, for any kind of mental health, any, any help, well, you're, you're diagnosed as what? Delusional, delusional worst case schizophrenic. I, went I would suggest that you don't go to any psychiatrist that, um, fortunately, Steve had a, had a decent experience with a psychiatrist, but most will just slap that diagnosis on you and you could be institutionalized because that is what is happening to a lot of targeted individuals. Um, but they mind fuck you. So do liars. So do narcissists. So do people who don't know who they are and refuse to ever do that work to get to know who they are. No, that's the cat sneezing. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of mind fucking going on in this country. And you know what? I am really sick of it. Please, you know, people will, you know, make their presumptions about other people and not understand that it's just a presumption. It's not the truth, but they communicate it back as truth. People who claim that I'm bashing Christians when I'm not doing that. People who claim that I'm so bitter and angry, and I'm not. I'm deeply frustrated. I am so frustrated now that, you know, between everything that I have to deal with on a daily basis and Maybe, Steve, you're experiencing this too. Computer, is it computer problems or are they, you know, screwing around with my computer and my programs and I can't seem to get things working and, my God, the buzzing is now so friggin' loud that I, I can't distract myself from it. And the box that I'm living in, you know, I mean, a lot of you know that I posted a video on <laughs> getting an eviction notice and I didn't even do anything. And then they just, well, she can stay. Uh, you know, well, you're going to do that to me. And if you understood my background, my history, especially with my family, you would understand what that would do to me. And what it does to me is I don't live in a place that I can actually trust at all. When's the next eviction going to be coming? But... You know what's happening too? I'll show you this. I have really bizarre things happening here. Now I have this this overhead light in my kitchen that now is buzzing. Buzzing really loudly and then it stops. Then the buzzing comes back 
and then it stops. And then this started. <laughs> You know, this is a telephone jack that I don't use. I don't even use this. And it went on for the longest time. I could not figure out how to stop it. And then it just stopped. A lot of bizarre things happening. I don't know if it's just a shitty place to live um, or if, you know, I... I I then think maybe they've been hit by microwaves and or is it that dirty electricity coming into the apartment or I don't know I don't know but you know what since living here watching them throw out people for no reason at all my getting this eviction notice for no reason at all I now I don't even want to call them for anything I don't want to see the the apartment manager. I don't want to see the maintenance guys. I, I just, I'm done. You know, I posted videos on, oh my God, the, the noise. That started in March and didn't end until like October. And then it was other noise. The banging, the polyurethane in apartments that leached into my apartment. Um, it's like I live in a factory. That's what I feel like. I live in a factory. You see the workers always around using their power tools and the noise. Okay, so I'm sensitive. You know, I had a stroke. Everything in my brain switched to another brain I don't, because I was never sensitive to noise. I was never sensitive to perfumes or um, had any kind of chemical sensitivity. And suddenly, that's who I am from medications put on the market, the adverse effects. And, you know, then you live the chronic physical pain. You keep trying to do everything that you possibly can. You walk. You've got to do the exercise. But it's backfiring now all the time. And it's backfiring. But that's the only outing you have is to walk in circles at a track. That's it. Or then go to see an elderly lady that sits in front of this mega TV screen two feet away watching reruns. And then you look to see what's on TV and you're like, holy shit, this country is gone. The crap, the commercials, wow. You, There's no one that you can relate to like you did up north, you know? And no, there is nowhere to go. You know, I'm not, please, uh, I'm done. I can't, you know, and it has nothing to do with you personally who's made the offer, come here. Um, I'm not, I can't do it. Uh, that's what I was living from 2012 on until I got to this place about a year and a half ago, I guess now. Can't believe I'm still alive, but um, yeah, done. There's too many crazy people and they may sound great, they may write well, but can't do it. I've been lied to. I've been lied about. I've been played. I've had money, um, you know, played to the point that I lost a lot of money. Done with it. Can't do it. Having to leave places because of 
being afraid of the subscriber who I thought was okay. No, I can't do it. The ripple effect of people who are lying, you have no clue the damage that you do. You have no clue. Because if that happens too many times to an individual, you suddenly, you put them in a position where they can no longer trust. And you do that to somebody who's vulnerable, who desperately needs to trust. But yeah, everything is, it's all about the self, right? Being comfortable. As long as you're comfortable. You don't care what you do to other people. And I'm tired of facing those people. And frankly, I have so many great subscribers and I don't want to know any more than I know. I want to just keep it as it is, talking to a few. And that's it, you know. It's time for people to start really, you know, listening to others. And I'm not talking about me. I'm not. I'm talking about people who are really going through hell. Um, I'm talking about, you know, uh, um, supporting people, believing them. Stop placing your experience on other people. Uh, stop calling people crazy. Really listen to people. Stop with the friggin' presumptions that you make about people you know, on YouTube, um, that, that you don't even know. I mean, that's the craziness. You don't know these people that, uh, but then you psychoanalyze them and you claim that, you know, I, I got this one comment from somebody who, uh, it was underneath in Truth by Grace's video. This guy psychoanalyzing me, claiming that because I was so hurt that I, um, that I have difficulty believing in Jesus. First of all, look, please understand. Um, I absolutely do believe I have a Christ consciousness. Oh, I know. <gasps> oh my God, a Christ consciousness. Oh, Carol, don't you understand? That's not going to get you into heaven. Look, you have your belief. Great. Okay. But, um, And my relationship is my relationship with Jesus, myth or not. It doesn't, I don't even care. Um, but you, know, you, you have so many people claiming, oh, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And you, they, they don't even know what you've done and what you do. And, uh, oh, God, you know, social media, man, drives you nuts. And then people claiming, you know, oh, I'm so sorry. You've had so many Christians in your life that haven't been real Christians. But it's kind of like, don't take it out on Christ. I don't. <laughs> Are you kidding? And it's not about, you know, me hating Christians. It has nothing to do. It has everything to do with the individuals who are living these hypocritical lives. I don't then, you know, uh, I see this Christian who's clearly not a real Christian, who's just lying to themselves and lying to everybody else. Why do you think I then uh, transfer that to Christianity and Christ? Just because we've got so many individuals who are full of shit about their love of Christ has nothing to do with Christ, has everything to do with the individual. Let's try to get our thinking clear, okay? Yeah, I, I am...
don't want to say that I'm done like Charlotte SRB, but boy, did everything that she say really resonate. But I can't do what I used to do. I, I literally, I feel like I have brain damage now. The, things are not right. And I don't know what I'm doing. And I am... Uh, I think I'm just going to have to do just talking videos. Who knows? Maybe I'll, you know, come back. I don't, I don't see that happening because I've been working this, trying so hard to get me back. And I, I'm not coming back. So I don't, this is not sympathy. This is not, you know, uh, for you to try to figure out what I need and then say, well, why don't you try this? And then don't do it, please. Please, because that's not what this video is about. And frankly, I know who I am and I need real life support. So the only thing that you could do for me is get me back my life. And that's going to be a real challenge for you to do that. So you can't do it. All right. What I want to see are, are people like Steve and others who are suffering the consequences of, of this nightmare that we're living get the support they need, that we come together, that we try to figure out a way to lessen the pain that we're all experiencing now living this time and uh, so if I can post videos just talking I don't know maybe I don't know what to do at this point I really don't so I'm posting this and uh, I'm sorry Steve no one deserves no one deserves to be targeted by other people who are so unbelievably psychopathic, evil nut jobs who just get a thrill watching their target, watching a life get destroyed. That's what evil people love. They love to destroy life. Good people, they like to enhance life. So, and I also know that the only way that this world will ever get better is if each individual does the work necessary to make themselves better. The individuals in the aggregate, the ripple effect, would absolutely be a radical change. I don't see that happening. I don't see individuals doing that. I There's only one subscriber that I've known who has the ability to take responsibility for what she does, to work on it, to try to better herself, but any of us engaged in this work knows it takes a long time, a really long time. And I've known a lot of people that I know one person who's taking seriously the need to change themselves 
Well, that is <laughs> quite the testament of what's happening here with the American people. If there's anything that I can do, but I have to tell you, I am in piss poor shape. I can't write. It takes me forever to write a paragraph. Um, and because, you know, there's so many people here that I don't know, I'm reluctant to to just go for it and start talking to and look my life has you know <laughs> I had that family that was putting me through hell then you come on the internet so you couple that with the hell created by people on here on the internet they lying about you they post in videos about you they claim in this and that, and they're all lies. You know, funny. The one thing that has gotten me to hang on, hang on, hang on, was this really overwhelming need to clear my name from the lies that my family told. You don't do that on social media. <laughs> don't go that direction because you're just going to get hit with more and more lies from all of these people that don't even know you. They're not in your life. They have no clue about you. Boom. So then you're just saturated in more lies. Great. So I got a while ago, I accepted there ain't no way for me to climb out and be free of lies. But maybe some other people can. Yeah, at this point, What, do we just hang on? That's it, that's life, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on until you die. I wanted life to be more. I wanted it to be real. I wanted it to be meaningful. You saturated in lies? Shit. It just becomes meaningless. <laughs> 